Welcome Professor Ishiguro and Mr. Doi to the stage with okay. me. Hi. Hello, Professor. Welcome. Mr. Hello. Doi, welcome. Thank you. So, Professor here, he's a distinguished professor at Osaka University and also visiting director of Ishiguro Laboratories at the Advanced Telecommunications Research Institute. Um, and his research interests include sensor networks, interactive robotics, and android science. And then Mr. Kazuhiro Doi is the vice president of Nissan and heads Nissan's advanced engineering. So let's get starting. We've just unveiled something today here at CES, and that's that invisible to visible technology. So, Mr. Doi, could you tell us what that is all about? Okay. Uh, the first of all, you know, uh, now we are living in the real world. Mm -hmm. It's a, a universe, and uh, today, uh, lots of the data, our personal data, is stored in the digital world. Mm -hmm. It's a metaverse, and uh, now the Nissan is proposing the new concept to connect that two worlds, universe and metaverse. And uh, we call that technology as uh, invisible to visible or the ITV. And uh, so then, uh, uh, you know, that our challenge is that, you know, how we can bring the metaverse into the vehicle with a convincing way of the communication. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is a communication, uh, not only the universe and the metaverse, but also the communication between the human being and the machine. Yes. And uh, in that sense, you know, I got uh, lots of the, you know, good suggestions from the Mr. Uh, Professor Ishiguro, uh, who is the expert of the robotics communication. Yes, so Professor, you are the pioneer in Android and humanoid research, and you acted as an advisor in this invisible to visible technology with Nissan, correct? Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your work. Yeah, actually, you know, um, the, well, human-like interface is a bit important for us. So the, the Nissan technologies, they are thinking to use uh, 3D avatars, right? So that is a very similar to my Android. So my Android is a physical robot, but it is not avatars, but uh, you know, the both of them are, have a very human-like appearance, movement, and the conversation abilities. And um, basically, you know, that human, human-like avatars and human-like robot is the best interface for the humans. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, many functions in our brain to recognize human voice and human gestures, human, you know, the facial expressions. So therefore, the, it's easy to interact with, uh, you know, human-like avatars and human-like robots. I think, uh, you know, we can share the, a lot of uh, technologies in uh, robotics and the vehicles and maybe the uh, 3D avatars. Sure, sure. Yeah, and what so, are uh, yeah, so in that sense, now that, yeah, that one of the key words is the interface. And uh, for the Professor Ishiguro, that, you know, that, that is kind of his work. And uh, for him, the interface is uh, you know, kind of the facial expression like a human being. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the case of the car, you know, usually, traditionally, uh, we use the interface just uh, you know, that, uh, kind of display mm -hmm. or the beep or sound, something like that. Right. So because you know, in the traditional vehicle, you know, we need to transfer the information like uh, safety type of things. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why the, you know, the beep or the flat display was enough. But uh, from now, if we want to transfer more rich information from the uh, digital world, mm -hmm. metaverse, you know, that's kind of, you know, uh, simple interface is not enough. Right. So in that sense, you know, we have a uh, lot of the commonalities to think about how the human understand the information. Yeah, I really think so. so. We need to interact with the vehicles, I mean, like a humans, right? Yeah. So we, we, we can use the human-like conversational ways for the uh, vehicle-human interaction. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And that is some of that machine intelligence part right. of that. Do you want to explain some more of that to us? Machine intelligence, you know, um, well, actually, I have studied the many human... Um, many aspects of uh, humans mm -hmm. with my Android. And, uh, you know, I study the human-robot interactions. Okay, so the question is uh, how we can interact with uh, intelligent robots. Uh, I mean, the, how the robot interact with intelligent humans. Okay, mm -hmm. so these ideas can be applied for the 
human vehicle, intelligent vehicle interactions. So um, the, I, I think uh, the vehicle is going to be a kind of a partner for the humans. Okay, so we, I think it's better to interact with the vehicles uh, uh, like um, as a, our human partners. Okay, right? a, par a partnership. So yeah. And and how do you see that machine intelligence yeah. evolving? Yeah. So uh, you know, in in the in the car industries now the intelligence is the uh, the important keyword. Right. And uh, the, my laboratory also working for the autonomous driving. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes people see the uh, autonomous driving as a you know, robot car. So, but uh, I'm not thinking that we are making a robot. So, but uh, if we want to make a better autonomous driving, we have to know more about the human being. Yeah. Because you know, uh, we are trying to uh, imitate the behavior of the drivers, mm -hmm. but uh, to make uh, better drivers, we know more about the uh, human being. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that sense, you know, while we are discussing with uh, uh, Professor Ishiguro, mm -hmm. yeah, one thing what he said very interesting was that uh, he is researching about a robot, but he have more interest for the human being. Mm -hmm. So he is using a robot to know the human being. And in that sense, that his approach is very close to what we are doing today. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, uh, so far in the vehicle uh, de development, we focus focus on the just functions like uh, engines or you know the bodies. Right. But uh, now, so we need to focus on the drivers. So we need to understand how the driver behaves. So this is uh, you know the human understanding. So basically. I'm trying to understand humans by using a very human-like robot, and that kind of ideas can be applied to this, you know, intelligent vehicles. I think. Okay. Yeah. So and uh, if we study about a human being, it's really, really excellent. Yeah. I think that our autonomous vehicle is not so bad, but uh, if we know, if we know, or if we research the human drivers precisely, it's still far be beyond about a machine. Yeah, and how we can fulfill this gap, that, that is really the question. Yes, yeah. quite a challenge, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, that's yes. a very, very important challenge. Mm -hmm. uh. Yeah. So what are some of the most difficult things to uh, imitate about a human being that you find in your Android studies? Yeah, many, many things, you know. Um, well, the, when I started the, uh, my Android project, the mm -hmm. well, first challenge was how to imitate the human soft skins sure. and the human, you know, the uh, sophisticated the, uh, uh, behaviors, the movement, for example, the facial expressions and the body movement, and then, you know, conversational abilities, so interactions. Now we are focusing on the interactions. The interaction is a very, very difficult, but I think uh, we need uh, that technologies for having the uh, better relationships between a human and the machine, the human robot and the human and vehicles. Sure. Yeah, so making more of that emotional and brain connection. Right. Sure. Right. So I know invisible to visible is just incredibly revolutionary. I mean, we're literally able to connect to this virtual space and in a way bring someone into the vehicle who's not actually physically there to enjoy that experience with us. But part of me fears that living in this virtual space, we're going to lose the fun of experiencing real driving. I mean, how do you feel about that? Yeah, so that's an interesting question. So, uh, yeah, actually, the, uh, it has been already 30 years past uh, after I joined Nissan. And uh, in the last 30 years, I keep thinking about, you know, that the car mm -hmm. is a kind of the, uh, you know, enhancing, like a robot suit. So because a car can enhance my ability. Sure. So I just can you know, run you know, the very slowly, like uh, you know, four kilometers per hour or five kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. But a car can maximize my ability, mm -hmm. like a hundred kilometers per hour world. Right. And, uh, but uh, this is an expansion of the physical ability. But uh, now, if we connect the, the physical to virtual, it, we can enhance our ability more. Mm -hmm. So we can jump to the time or space. Sure. And, uh, but uh, still, still I feel you know, physical move is richer than the virtual move. 
No, I don't know why, but uh, that is a very interesting discussion with uh, Professor Ishiguro. Mm -hmm. And uh, while we are discussing, finally, our discussion leads to the what is the move means okay. for the physical body. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, you know, the moving is very, very important for us. Right? Without the moving, so I think uh, we cannot memorize the episode. So how we can memorize the episode? Right? So suppose you're driving a car and you're heading to the uh, well, museum, right? So you're going to have uh, imagination about the museum when you are driving. Okay. And then when you know, the, uh, arrive at the museums, you can have a real experience. So imaginations and real experience. So this kind of, uh, you know, the uh, chain, right, mm -hmm. you know, is going to be a good ex episode. Right. So without the uh, moving, without the imaginations, we cannot have a rich experience. So, right. so, so therefore, you know, physical mov moving is uh, very important for us. Right. So you, you probably, you know, you like to have uh, some uh, some walking, walking in the cities. Right. So walking uh, always, you, you you try to imagine something, and you know, you're gonna have a very rich experience. So that is the meaning of uh, uh, the moving and the meaning of a vehicle, okay. right? Yeah. So uh, so now you know, this is a concept to com combine the real world and the metaverse. Mm -hmm. So and by combining those, maybe our move is richer than today. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mr. Ishiguro said it's a you know episode machine. So. Mm -hmm. Today, the car is just a machine to move. But uh, by combining those, yeah, it's an episode. It car can be the episode machine. And uh, now we are thinking how we can make our move richer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and, uh, it's like uh, you know, the quality of move. Sure. Yeah, and the digital world can support mm -hmm. you know, to make it right. richer. Right, actually, we can enhance our cognitive model. Mm -hmm. So I'm living in a Japan, in Osaka. I have a small cognitive model the, um, in, in my cities. But if I drive the car, then I can extend my cognitive model more and more, right? Okay. And if uh, you know, the vehicle is intelligent, I can talk with uh, uh, the vehicles, and you know, the, I can have a more richer experience and, and extend the cognitive model. Yes. Right. So truly, yeah. really creating more of a partnership with the vehicle to enhance our experience right. in the vehicle. Yeah. So and, uh, today, the, even today, we have a very rich information in the digital world. Yes. But uh, I don't think you know, if we push the information uh, to the driver or the passenger, just pushing, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how we can interact or how we can communicate to the driver with uh, you know, appro appropriate manner. So that's the key point. And uh, to make it happen, we have to know more about ourselves. So that's, that's a really the interesting part of this research. It is, right. yes. Yeah, it's I totally agree with that. Extremely interesting. Well, this has been such a great conversation. I'm sure you guys have been very pleased with this. And it has been such a pleasure to have you here today. We're truly honored to have this conversation with you. So Professor Ishiguro and Mr. Doi, let's give them a round of applause.